pre-internet, so I apologize. Nothing was happening on the internet yet. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you a quick story. So uh, I said, well, let me be your general manager of Interactive, because this stuff's kicking up. And they had Dell as a client, and I thought that was really interesting. So when I got there, first of all, I was just surprised everything took so long. What do you mean if you got to go through this creative process? Well, I was careful on this, because I was an impatient client, not appreciating what goes on in the ad agency. Um, and, I, and I built our interactive business. So we had Dell and Apple and 3M and Motorola and uh, Hart Hanks and all sorts of flagship companies as well. And we were the first agency to do work on Dell.com. And I, remember I told you, well, this is pre-internet. Well, this is just as the internet's kind of coming into play. Dell.com was run by their IT department. Its mission in life was to take phone calls that they would normally get into their support center and get them online. And basically, it was a $2.30 phone call for an amortized cost of 10 cents per visit on the web. Huge payback, right? If you build this and people get their support off the internet, sounds like a great idea. Imagine supporting customers on the internet. Uh, and so that, that worked. <laughs> and we, then we launched the first commerce site, which was targeted at higher education uh, and, and some campus stores. Uh, so anyway, we built the interactive business. The bubble happened. It just was an unbelievable time. You're in the middle of it. Uh, uh, the, the economics were crazy because, uh, and, and you're you're about we're about in this bubble right now because the skill sets and the orientations that you have got that you guys have around social and mobile and the use of technology to do marketing is a really really powerful time. Well, there was this internet bubble that happened right around 2001, I guess it was. Well, 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 99, close enough. 99, and then the, then the millennium thing happened, and we all thought, by the way, I don't know if you remember, who was born before 2000? You guys were, yeah, see, your, 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 your little wind up toys when you were eight years old, that's about right, isn't it? Is that close? Okay. Yeah, they were going to break because they couldn't handle the clock turning over to the year 2000. We thought everything was going to break. Gas pumps were going to break, banks were going to falter, the whole world's going to go to hell, nothing happened. Um, <laughs> But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, but it was a good excuse to sell a lot of software and services to companies who were all panicked that it was going to happen. It, I remember very well. It was, yeah. and, and running an interactive shop, our, our economics just went to crap because I would hire somebody for thirty-five thousand dollars a year. They get an offer from Dell for eighty thousand dollars a year. What do I do? Because my economics completely changed, and it would cost me eighty thousand dollars to replace them. That's how much talent they had at that point. So where would they where'd they go? Well, I would say go to Dell. Bit of a yeah. there. Uh, so we said, just, we'll just go to Dell then. Uh, but the market, so we had to take the interactive firm and fold it back into the agency as a whole, and I turned it into basically a marketing consultant with a really great story that we ended up with eventually whenever you want to go there. Yeah, this is what's the call. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me ask you a question. You're, I mean, you, you just mentioned that some similarities to today. Um, You've benefited greatly from, from really being a guy that understood tech and marketing sort of both sides of that fence. And there's a, a, a bit of a sea change that's taking place today, and you mentioned around social and mobile. And I know you see a lot of that, particularly with your current assignment, dropping experts in to help these companies navigate these waters. Let's talk a little bit about that, a, a, a kind of fast forward to today's scope. Talk a little bit about what you see out there as it relates to those skill sets, i.e. social and mobile, in particular, because I got a lot of folks here that are leaving in May. Okay? I just, how many are that? How many are out in May? Oh, okay, gosh. Okay. So how many, how many of you know where you're gonna go? That's all that's pretty good. That's very good actually. Um, and I, I'd love to explore this idea. How many are going to Dell? Okay. <laughs> Uh, was it not? Yeah, that was not. It was not. That's what I figured. Um, um, no disrespect intended to Dell, by the way. Natalie, yeah, yeah. really, really great company. Uh, no, it's a great company. Um, <laughs> yeah. Now, see, they think we can. It really is. It really is a great company. I'm fascinated, right? They're going to buy it back and see what happens. Yeah. And they don't have to report on anything they're doing. Ooh, what's going to be like in five years? Ooh. Well, it's interesting every semester when I do a show of hands because I would have HP come in a lot, and you'll have somebody from HP in the of this semester. Uh, they'll come in from HP, and I, I have less people in the audience that own a Dell, even though it's our town favorite, uh, than I do three or four other brands. So it's interesting they don't get so much support here. But um, 
Talk a little bit about this idea of being 22-ish, having a fundamental understanding not only of social but now of mobile, and how you might leverage those skill sets coming out of school today. Because you're, again, dropping people into a, to assignments that are dealing with these issues on a daily basis. How appreciated, how needed are these skills? How valuable are these assets that these folks are, to some degree, growing up with by default, really going to help them after May? It's what goes with it, I think. So, okay. so the sea change is, is in the, the social mobile dynamics, which is all enabled by everything you can list in your iPhone or your, you know, your Android device, whatever. It's, it's the location services piece in that. It's the fact that you always have a network. It's the fact that apps are now very, very modular. Some functionality is kind of in little containers of stuff. It's that you know, alerts can be managed and your identity can be managed in terms of who sees what and when. And there's a lot of control that the consumer has too. But to me, the thing that, that has to be that has to go with that, and, and frankly, for me, because that, that's all fine and good, but how does that relate to most of the market, which is business to business marketing? Uh, and, and it comes down to, well, how do you manage that stuff? How, if you're going to do, if you're going to have a mobile campaign, how do you turn it on? How do you manage it? What power do you get to track it? Um, how accountable is this the stuff that, that you get going? I mean, in, in our in our company, for example, you know, we, we made the decision by George we're going to go from blogging once a month to blogging up to five times a week, and our traffic, our web traffic, went from 2,500 to 15,000 visitors a month this year. Ooh, traffic's up. Wow, way to go. Do you think I can attribute a single piece of business back to a blog article? I can't do it. Or, or all of our Twitter activity, probably 20 a day through the various channels that we're using? Can't do it. I can't attribute it back. Right? Am I going to tell you that it's wrong to spend my energies being socially active? I call it social hygiene. I think you know, in order to have a presence, in order to Google find you more and more in, 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 in a relevance that you can't even imagine, that you gotta you gotta go do those things. So um, I, I frankly think there's much more excitement. And, and if I was if I was getting ready to be really, uh, uh, there'd be one area I'd spend a lot of time on. That would be HubSpot. Do you know HubSpot here? Anybody here at HubSpot? Okay, you will. HubSpot is a uh, it's a combination of things. So if I say content management system, does that mean anything? To, I know that all the HTML guys will say yeah. Like a WordPress, that's a content management system. So you know, how to how to update a website without having to code it, right? So and and there's really advanced platforms that you can use. HubSpot is is, is a platform really again for mid, for mid market companies, but I'd say up to a billion dollars in, in, in sales. But in addition to be a way to manage your, your, your website, it's got all these things that make it easy to be highly social. They've got an amazing blog engine. They've got an amazing uh, email marketing engine. They've got incredible analytics uh, and, and, and an awesome nurturing engine. So for example, uh, you know, people visit your website. They say, oh, grab that ebook, grab that paper. And then what happens? Well, to me, the, the, it's the science in marketing now. When you have an engine like this where you can say, not say, gee, it would be a really great idea to send these guys another offer in a week, but to have a system that does it for you. And to know that the people that downloaded this ebook might be interested in this offer, and you're trying to squeeze them through some sort of sales funnel to eventually get them to engage as a customer. <coughs> it's the science of that that, frankly, fascinates me. Um, so I think it's really, really powerful. I mean, just by virtue of being a millennial, you have, you have this perspective that most of the people you're going to work for in companies aren't really going to have. Because you're, you're going to see things, even though we're all using the same devices, you're going to see things. You're going to have a, it's like my kids, you know, they, they call me, but they never leave a message because that's not what you do. You know, why would I leave a message, Dad? You know I called you. It says right on your phone. You go, well, I want to know what you were calling about. Well, you'll call me back if you want to. <laughs> you understand those, those social mechanics. And, and I don't. I'm still saying, you will leave me a message. Um, I don't say that. Uh, so I, 
HubSpot, and if you, the cool thing for all of you, HubSpot is its own university. There's probably 15,000 videos and how-tos and whatever, and I am, I'll make my pitch right now, I am looking for somebody that can be a HubSpot wizard and be a paid intern for me in the summer. You'll get more than a few handshakes at the end of class then. <laughs> Just be prepared. Okay. Uh, so, the, uh, so on the topic of this idea of millennials <clears throat> understanding the mechanics or the nuances of, of, a, of a socially and mobile engaged existence, how do they monetize that? I mean, how do you, how do you take that to market in a way um, that actually adds real value to help those people who are fleeing in vain? I don't want to turn this into a placement exercise, but to the degree that you, you can take this experience and turn it into something that is more of a deliverable. Do you have any advice in that? Regard? I do. I, and, and, and HubSpot was a, was a, is a glowing example of it. Let's use the numbers. <coughs> so if you think of the categories, what you want to know, who are the players? Who are the players that relate to marketing? Bizarre Voice, we were talking about earlier. The Bizarre Voice is in the social category. What do they do? You know, what, what are they accomplishing? What kind of cases do they have? What, what, what are they, what are they, and, and know that. Make, make that something that you experience. What, I mean, you, you might even come up in things like job interviews. Well, tell me what you know about social. Well, uh, using the Bizarre Voice platform, uh, you know, Pizza Hut changed their blah, blah, blah to so-and-so, and I think that was one of the most impressive campaigns of all of 2013. Do you? Yeah. I mean, I would, I would, I would find out the, 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 the companies that are doing not, not just not just the end companies. So, and you hear from GSD and M doing some things with Air Force. with Air Force. Well, what were the what were the in between things? Because the the skill set it used to be it used to be at the bottom of your resume. It says I know Word and Excel and PowerPoint. Right. And before that it was I know how to type at 120 words a minute. <laughs> Right. That's what it used to be. Now you want to say, um, I've used the uh, 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 spread fast social tracking engine, right? Uh, familiar with uh, WordPress, <coughs> I've built uh, three sites, one for my family and, and two for the gardener <coughs> company. I mean, I mean, it's that kind of stuff, you know, I would learn, I would learn the chunks that are making, I would learn the pieces that are making those things happen, not just the big ideas, because otherwise you're going to be in a room full of big ideas. I really have this great social idea. Great. Well, how are you going to turn it on? How are you going to turn it on? How are you going to manage it? So more about getting your hands dirty with the tools themselves. I think so. Building tools or analytics or whatever it may be. It's about not just experiencing social and mobile, but really getting your hands on the tools that are enabling all of that. Because the insights and the proof of these things working are in those tools, whether it be something that turns it on, something that tracks, something that compiles the analytics. Here's a, here's a company that's totally on top of things here in Austin, is Adometry. Just the way it sounds, Adometry. And they're in the attribution business. So uh, a company, name, name a company like me, that ends up being uh, stupid because I go, Oh, this guy called me uh, after he saw my ad on LinkedIn. LinkedIn must be a really powerful solution for me, um, uh, but Facebook must not be because they're not calling. And by the way, I advertise on Facebook even though I'm selling to CEOs of mid-sized companies because I can target them through Facebook, and it's a hugely cost-effective vehicle. And so, uh, what Adometry does is they say, "Wait a minute, you've got a number of channels." going on. You've got display advertising over here in the Wall Street Journal, and you've got some uh, sponsorships you're doing here, you're investing in pre-roll on YouTube, you've got all these places where people may get touched, and what they're able to do through some combination of rocket science is, is, is absolute, is put together a truer picture of attribution. Uh, so the big opportunity that they missed, because it was just a little too early for them, the week, this was just last year, the week that Facebook was going public last year. Billions of billions of dollars at stake. Do you know what happened the Monday before the Thursday they went public? On Instagram. Didn't they buy Instagram for a billion dollars? Yeah, that was that was actually three months before. <laughs> they had a billion dollar shot in screen. What was that about? <laughs> uh, the Monday before the Monday before it came out, GM, it was in the Wall Street Journal, GM front page says 
pulling out of our Facebook advertising expenditure, we get no return on it. <coughs> oh my gosh, what a death. Do you want to know one of the reasons why their IPO didn't, didn't float? That's, that's a huge one, right? And so at, here's Adometry's opportunity at that point for all you PR people. It is you call up Fox Business and you say, guess what, we have an opinion on this. And, and GM companies hasn't done the work, or call GM and say, we'll do the work for you. Because it may not be about the last touch, may not be about that last click to, to buy a car, and maybe some combination of things, and Facebook may be hugely important to them, even from an advertising standpoint. Well, to your own point, you know, we talked a little bit about how you source leads in your own business, and there's not, even in this analytic network world, you don't have direct cause and effect around right. how you generate leads even off of your Facebook and your LinkedIn efforts. So how all of that pot gets um, is, is, is very interesting, and there's not clear-cut channels all the time, and how they support one another are also not clearly defined. It is true, and, and it's the whole category of attribution. If there's something, I think if I was coming out of school right now, I'd be the social, mobile, marketing automation, attribution student. I think that's, I think I would just go to school on that every night, because all the material's out there. I mean, there's, not, there's, no, there's nothing you can't get access to to learn this stuff, right? You know, we talked before a little bit about this idea of how the understanding of marketing technology has a benefit set for new employees, whether they go into the technology or even the communication field. There's a there's a sort of a haloed effect from understanding a lot of these principles because, because there isn't a business that doesn't involve some leverage of marketing. At the same time, technology is driving so much from business processes to marketing, et cetera, et cetera. I guess in a little bit of a flag wave for why technology marketing is important, maybe you could speak a little bit to that just as a general directive in terms of how understanding technology and technology marketing might be applicable in just about any one of the business. Well, just first I'll give you an example uh, proof point, uh, because I'm not sure I would have, I don't think I could have made, I could have made the claim, but I wouldn't have had any cases for it. Um, in our company, we have marketers from every variety. Uh, the people that we can place not because they're dropping into technology companies, but because they have a technology company marketing background, they can work for a manufacturer or even a packaged goods company. I mean, it's amazing because, because they're critical thinkers, uh, because they're, they know how to move fast, they know how to, I mean, that's just, that's just kind of the makeup. I mean, if you come from packaged goods and you drop into a technology company, you're gonna go, well, the first thing we need to do is fix the consumer brand. You know, we have, and it's like, you know, the CEO of the, of the technology company is saying, yeah, we got a brand. You know, they don't, they don't get that. The technology guy comes in and says, you know, we have to get our message right to be relevant to the marketplace to accelerate sales. Oh, okay. You know, the sales force isn't telling the story, so they can't convert the opportunities. Oh, okay. So we got to find a better way to tell the story. It's not relevant anymore. We've got to go to market and figure that out. 